Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 1 of Intro to Swift. In this video series, we're going to learn about the Swift language. We're not going to use it to make any apps, but we're just going to learn about how the language works, essentially. Uh, in a separate series, if you guys are interested, we can look at app development with Swift, but in this series, we're going to first get a basic understanding in it. Now, I want this series to move a little bit quicker than some of the previous series, because a lot of this stuff will be a review if you know PHP or Java or most other languages. So if you ever get confused at any point, of course, leave a comment, uh, but it, it will help you here if you know Java or PHP or another language, JavaScript, whatever, because uh, once you know one language, it's easier to learn some other languages. So what is Swift? Swift is a new language that Apple has created for iOS 8, OS 10 Yosemite, uh, and Xcode 6. So it's this new language. It's basically a replacement for Objective-C. Objective-C is an old language. If you look at the syntax, it's very strange. Uh, so Swift was made to be a nicer looking version of Objective-C, essentially. Swift code runs alongside Objective-C, so if you have a project written in Objective-C and you write some Swift code, they can run right next to each other and they can work together. It's sort of like if you've used Groovy or Scala uh, with Java, how they can all run together because they both run, they all run on the Java Virtual Machine. In this case, um, Objective-C and Swift can work together, so you can have code that exists together. You can you know, use Objective-C classes and functions from within Swift, so that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, so let's get started with Swift. First thing is you're going to need to have a Mac in order to do this. For those of you who use Windows or even Linux, I don't believe that there's a way that you can do this. This is a proprietary language of Apple. It's made for Mac OS and iOS, so I don't believe that you're going to have any luck if you want to code or at least run it. You could write the code, but I don't believe that you can run it on Windows. So make sure that you have a Mac for this. You're going to have to. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get started. The IDE of choice for Swift, or the only IDE that you can really use, is Xcode, which is made by Apple. You want to make sure that you have Xcode 6 or later because that is where Swift was added. So if you have Xcode 5, you'll want to update it or you know any previous version. But if you don't, uh, you'll want to go on your Mac that is running 10.6.8, I believe, or later. You should have this App Store, and I'm sure that you'll have it if your computer has been updated in the past few years. You want to open up the App Store because this is where Xcode is served. Uh, and then from here, we can just search for Xcode. And you'll see it's this first result. Now, Xcode is free, so that's awesome. You don't have to pay any money in order to develop with Xcode, in order to develop Swift. Uh, so you can just go ahead and hit download. It is a rather large file. This version of it is 2.49 gigabytes. Um, so it is going to be a large file when you download it. But once you have it downloaded, you're good to go. Uh, so we can go ahead and open up Xcode. So we'll open up Xcode and we get sent right to this welcome window. Uh, for this series, we're going to at least begin by using a playground. Now one cool feature of Xcode is they have playgrounds. It's basically where you can write Swift code and you know test it and see how it works out without having to create a whole project and in order to have a bunch of different files and have some main file with some entry point and then getting everything configured if you just want to write some code and see it run you can use a playground for that now if you start developing an app or an application and you need to have a whole project with you know a ton of files in it you're going to use an actual project but in this case we can use a playground for a while because we're just figuring out kind of the semantics of the or excuse me we're just figuring out the syntax of the language and how all of that works. So we'll go ahead and click get started with a playground and we will get the option to name it and I will call this intro to Swift 
And we can choose the platform iOS or OS 10. I'll choose OS 10 because I'm going to do it for the Mac. There aren't two different versions of Swift, but if you're writing an iOS app versus a Mac OS app, it is a bit different. So we'll hit next and I'll decide where I want to save it. Let's go to YouTube and then I'll create a new folder called, I yeah, probably should have done this before, intro to Swift. And then uh, I'll create this and I'll call playground. I'll put it in the playground folder. So I'll hit create, and we now have this intro to Swift Playground. Now if you take a look on your file system uh, right here on your folder, you'll see that there's this dot playground file. And this file here is, um, that's your entire project in one little file. And we'll go ahead and delete uh, all of that stuff there. So we're going to get started the way that you start any language, of course, by writing hello world. Uh, and we're going to write the hello world application. Let's just talk about a few things. Swift is different than any language I've ever seen, or at least I should say Xcode is different than any IDE I've ever seen, because when you write code in Swift, it is automatically... Um, executed and then the results come in this little bar. So most of the time you write your code, you press the run button and then your code is you know compiled and ran and then you see your results in a console but here it will actually show your results right here. So if I have a print statement over here right beside it over here it'll tell me the result of that print statement. So that's an interesting feature. There's no run button. It's a very basic plain interface. So the first thing that's good to know is comments. If you ever want to write a comment, you just use two slashes and we'll say, this is a comment. It does not uh, what is it? affect the program. So if you ever want to essentially write yourself a note, you use two slashes and that's a comment. Comments are completely ignored by Swift. They're just messages to you. They won't count for anything. If you want to have a comment that spans multiple lines, you'll do slash asterisk and then asterisk slash. And I can say this comment spans multiple lines. And we can even tab that over if we wanted to. Uh, so essentially, we have our two different types of comments. If you ever want to write a comment for yourself, um, that is how you would want to do it. Now let's actually write the print statement. Now, as I said, the cool thing about a playground is you don't need to declare a class, you don't need to declare a function or method, and you don't need to hit a run button. So we're not going to declare a main class, we're not going to declare a main function or a main method, we're just going to simply write what we want to happen and let it happen. Now to print a line in Swift, we use the println function. Unlike Java, it's not attached to an object. There's no system.out.println. You just write the word println. And you'll see that um, Swift is really nice, and it will show us um, when I type in println. It has three suggestions for me. It has this println with nothing. It just prints out a new line. One that takes in an object and prints out that object. And then this third one, uh, but we're not really going to worry about that. We want to choose this one right here, and we're going to write the word hello in double quotes. When I save this, uh, you'll see right here it says hello. So what happened? When I write print ln and I write something inside of it in quotation marks, it's going to evaluate that statement. In this case, it's hello, and then it's going to print it out. It's going to call this print ln function, and we'll get into functions soon, so don't worry about that. But this is how you write hello world. It's one line, and actually, it doesn't need a semicolon. One of the amazing features of Swift is that you don't need semicolons. It makes the code look neater, uh, but otherwise, it doesn't do too much. So that is all you need to do to write hello world. You just write print ln, and whatever you want to print out, you can just put in double quotes. So we put the message hello. Let's just write hello world. And you'll see now the script is run, the comments are ignored, and when it gets to this line, it evaluates it to the output of hello world. And you'll see that for this line, it says hello world. There's no run button, there's no console, it just says that based on this line of code, the output is hello world. And 
that's all that there is to it. Uh, so as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more Swift and some more coding videos. Bye for now.